What's up tubers and growers? Welcome to this episode. In this episode we're going to talk about powdery mildew and how to treat powdery mildew. I have recently had a episode with powdery mildew and I want to, t to educate you guys about it and talk about it. I'm, you know, I'm not immune to getting powdery mildew. Almost all the known growers that you guys know on YouTube and Instagram I guarantee you they deal with powdery mildew a few times a year so it can just it can happen and it all comes back to the grower of keeping your environment in check um, so without further ado you guys I'm super excited I got Wolverine grower over today he's going to show us how to apply and treat with wettable sulfur and you guys are going to find out and learn a lot of things about wettable sulfur that not only does it treat powdery mildew it treats pests, um, all kinds of things, kills eggs in the root zone, and stuff that I, I had no idea about. So, uh, I mean, really, you guys can limit your amount of products that you use to go to battle with pests and powdery mildew by maybe just using or condensing your amount of bottles down with adding the wettable sulfur in there. So, without further ado, and me rambling on, let's get to it, Wolverine. All right, today I got the man, Wolverine Grower, over. What's up, dude? How we doing? He's uh, gonna help show me and explain to all of us how to use and apply wettable sulfur. All right, where's that wettable sulfur at so we can show him exactly what we're talking about here. And a good example of a brand you can find at your local Lowe's. Right here is what we're currently using, and what'd you say the, the mixing ratios were? You're gonna wanna use this at two tablespoons per gallon, and that's a preventative as a fungicide and as a pesticide, so you can work against powdery mildew, bugs, thrips, all that good stuff. All right, so we've already hit the uh, GMO, uh, my Bruce Banner, and pretty much all these in veg got some powdery mildew, so. Wolverine knows a lot about treating it. I decided to bring them over. So what we got here is, what is this, the Wi-Fi? This is the Wi-Fi, and uh, this is already, just so you know, 80 degrees Fahrenheit, 9.5 pH water from his RO collection. And then we went ahead and added two tablespoons per gallon, mixed it up really well, and you want to keep a lot of pressure on it and keep it on the finest mist setting so you can create a lot of saturation because when you beam it, they don't form droplets, they run right off the plant. Okay, so, so now he's going to show us how to do it and how he does it and uh, he finds it to be the most effective. When you're spraying, you want to spray the layer of the medium in case there's any eggs or algae, you want to kill that first and then you want to work your way up because if you start from the top, the plant leaves get heavy and fall and they block the path that you would be getting on the stem. So we're going to start here, covering the medium for a couple seconds, letting it run in. Then we're going to start on the stalk, run all the way up the main working at that angle. Then we're gonna find the next, stay up the main, find the next, stay up the main. And we're covering the underside right now. That's why everything looks dry still. Now we're gonna start at the bottom layer and work around. And we wanna get the tops of everything from the bottom up. And try to wear eye protection and a mask if you're not used to handling this for the first time. I've been spraying it for years as a preventative, so I don't uh, look directly into the sprayer, and I make sure that I have total control of where it's pointed at all times. We're in an open ventilated garage too, I should note. Yes, we opened up the garage. Um, so not only is this a preventative, this this kill, it kills it, right? Yes, okay. So here's the best part about this. And this is now a completed plant. This is good for two full weeks or the rest of its life if you have a completely sealed, perfect environment. And the reason I say two weeks is because as this dries, if there's no fan or light to force dry it, it will cover the entire plant in a thick crusty layer. In about a day, he'll probably check back in and you'll see there'll be white everywhere. Looks like a, a dry powdery mildew almost. But what it is, is it's a layer that's gonna protect against if bug eggs, if mold, if hyphae, if anything were to try and hook onto these leaves, it's gonna act as a tough guy just saying, nope, not today. And for someone that's having swinging environments or someone that lives in a climate like most of us do or that can't afford thousands of dollars of equipment to constantly monitor every second of the day, this could save everything. 
and you don't want to use it in flour because when if you see pistols it's too late to use this there's other ways to treat powdery mildew it's not really killing it at that point it's holding it off so you can manage out your harvest and get a usable product but this will kill it off completely if used correctly and in the veg cycle <clears throat> now knowing my environment and my garden and my situation now that we've treated it once how many times per month or per week should i treat it or keep up on it so only because you already saw visible spores in your environment i would say in five to seven days i would reapply without rinsing this off in between so it's going to look white and crusty the whole week and only the new growth will look clean that's when you're going to want to reapply cover the entire plant and that's going to double check that you didn't miss anything the first time and that any new cells that were already about to form that maybe had baby powdery mildew spores on them now are killed too and at that point after two full applications i feel comfortable throwing it into a sealed flower room and not spraying anything on it for the rest of the so only two applications in my opinion is enough to thoroughly kill powdery mildew as long as you keep your environment in check after you spray it because that's important powdery mildew is everywhere it's going to be here tomorrow it's going to be here next week and it's at your neighbor's house and your mother's house too i hate to tell you it's just everywhere um god what was i going to ask you now um oh the cost oh uh, man i mean what's the cost on this versus um some of these other products that i was even showing on on okay. the live stream so you know i know what i paid for that and that is that's literally dirt cheap i paid like six bucks and we only use what two tablespoons for a gallon and so far we've used a quarter of a gallon to do two medium-sized veg plants so you can see that's we've used two of these for a gallon and including how the space that they leave it with we've only gotten to here so you could probably make at least 20 to 25 gallons and that means you're going to be spraying hundreds of plants in their entirety. This tire and bottle is, I think, six dollars at Lowe's, maybe seven online because they charge a convenience fee. Right. So for seven dollars, you're spraying hundreds of plants and killing bugs, russet mites. If anyone's heard about Subcool's problem, what he used to actually maintain a garden inside that pool home and still maintains is actually wettable sulfur. You can ask him. He found out about it last year, and it pretty much saved everything he had going on. Yeah. So, now here's a big question I want to ask you that a lot of people say about powdery mildew. Is it systemic? Absolutely not. And if you watch YouTube videos from 2005 prior, you're going to argue with me till you're blue in the face. And I'm just going to tell you it's not. And I can prove it with science. I don't have it all here in front of me right now, but I can tell you there's plenty of times that powdery mildew has been present in large commercial applications and in small private applications and in some of your favorite breeders personal spots and they've been able to beat it keep that cut for years and no one's ever known about it because it's not systemic i'm telling you it's all about environment 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 so there you go you guys i ran into a powdery mildew problem um i don't know everything about powdery mildew i haven't had it for eight years so i got it this time and, and this purely was my fault uh wolverine and i got on my uh, phone we started looking at my pulse app we zeroed right in on the problem. I dived down to what? 59 degrees. 59 degrees. With it high being 83. So that's, do the math there. Yeah, that's that's a huge, huge. four degrees. Yeah, huge temperature swing. So not only can cold and high humidity cause powdery mildew, but a big temp swing like that can do the same thing. So that comes back to grower error for my negligence of not keeping up on top of the technology that I have even in my pocket. Straight laziness. So um, here we are. And this is what we're going to do. We're going to finish off the veg room and uh, call it a, a day on this. So let I, these dry for four to six hours <clears throat> before you turn your lights back on. Sorry if I didn't say that. I'm sorry to cut you off, man. No, that's, that's, that's good. I, was I don't just, want people to burn their plants here. Right. I was just going to ask you uh, if you had any other points you wanted to talk about. So I thought it was important to put this on video share my experience with you guys let you guys know that you can battle pm it's a possibility to an extent you can battle it and control it so and even beat it in veg so and that's beat wolverine it. that's wolverine saying that yeah you don't have to kill your plants in veg if it's late in flower and it's bad you might want to make that conscious decision especially for an economic reason yeah. but in veg hit me up if you're in that super concern i'll help you fix your environment fix your plants 
you're good to go. And he's uh, at Wolverine Grower 420 on Instagram, yes, you guys. Sir. So thanks, dude. Thanks for coming over and helping. We're gonna finish this up. All right, let's check in on our plants 25, 24 hours later after the wettable sulfur treatment. And uh, this is what she looked like 24 hours later. See that? That's just the sulfur dried up. That's not PM. For all you guys out there, they're oh, all, that, that's PM. That, that's not PM, guys. That's the wettable sulfur. We showed you the droplets up close. They looked kind of milky. So, like, Wolverine Grower was explaining to me, he didn't say this on camera, but this is like, you could almost consider it like a body condom with the wettable sulfur. But, uh, you know, you heard us, you heard him. Wettable sulfur is beneficial in a lot of ways. Not only does it uh, kill your powdery mildew, it kills all kinds of pests and insects and everything. So, don't be afraid to go out and spend that $6, you guys. Get some wettable sulfur and uh, treat your problem. Uh, in here, my mom planted.